G'day guys, this is Rob from troutlaw.com.au back with another fly tying video this week and this week, uh, due to a request from one of our customers we're tying my version of the Claret Nymph you can tie this with the bead or without either way, they both work very well depending on whether you need to get down faster for those of you fishing in lakes without the bead, you'll probably find be more effective in the rivers and streams, the bead of one will get you down to where you need to be so let's get started We'll begin by popping a hook into the vise with the bead on there already. So I am using the Arex FW560 hook in a size 16 for this with a 330 second tungsten bead on it. Very small bead but a bit of weight to it so it will get down fast when it needs to. And then we're using Uni. 8 thread in wine because they don't do one called claret but the wine is as close as it gets and we'll start by applying that to the hook shank trimming off the excess and then bringing our thread down to the bend in the hook now for the rib we're going to use Danville fine wire in gold if you're doing a larger size, if you're going up, say size 12, you probably use the medium wire, but for 14, 16, 18 size hooks, the, uh, the fine wire is more than adequate. So we just catch that at the back, just by the hook bend, and then advance the thread up the hook shank, securing that wire the whole way up. Then bring our thread back down to the hook bend and put that wire down out of the way. Next we are going to tie in the tail and for that we're using the Lost Fly pheasant tails which are dyed to a lovely claret colour. So we're going to take a feather and peel out get rid of those broken bits and then we'll Peel out a half a dozen fibres or so and bring them straight out from the centre stem and rip off. If you keep those tips aligned at the base, then you'll find that the tips will be aligned at the other end. Now we only want this to extend about a half a hook shank past the bend, no further. So with that holding in place with our left hand, we'll just put a counterclockwise twist into that thread so it jumps backwards on us. Bite that into place with two wraps. And then bring the thread forward right up to just behind the bead where we can trim off the excess. Then we can bring our thread back down to just before the hook point and we'll start with the body so now a little bit of dubbing wax on the thread and we're dubbing the body with another product from Brent down in Tassie this is Brent's Claret Blend it's a blend of three different colours of Claret dubbing to get just the right colour combination that he likes for his flies and I love them for mine you don't need much of this just a very very small amount because we want to create for the first section of the body keep it quite slim so we want to start with just a very fine needle on that thread then bring our thread back down to where the tail begins until it just starts to catch those tail feathers and then we start wrapping forward just gently covering the hook shank we don't want to build up any lumps keep that needle nice and thin and bring it up the length of the hook shank to behind the eye and just get rid of that excess 
Now we take our thread, our wire, and we're going to wrap this forward. This first wrap, just need to be gentle with to make sure it's not going to pull that tail and bite on it. This is the one that allows us to get everything into position. Then the second wrap comes forward onto the dubbing. And you can pull down a little harder on that. Then even wraps up the body to that space that we've left behind the hook eye. And then we go around the thread a couple of times, around the shank once. And then that'll allow you to helicopter that thread. Until it busts off. Now I just want to clean up that body. So we're just going to trim with our scissors along the length of the hook. Picking that thread up to get it out of the way. Just want to keep the body nice and slim and we'll build some bulk up around the thorax. Okay. Doesn't need to be too perfect. You can spend all day doing that otherwise. Now for the legs, the wing case and the head, we're going back and using the claret pheasant tail again. For this this time we're going to grab a larger section, about a dozen or about a dozen or so fibers. Pull them straight out and break it off. Now taking them from the base, we're going to align those tips and we want to get them to about the same length as the end of the tail. Then hold that in place with your left hand. And lock it down with your thread. So now we can see that we've got the right length of fibre. This is very important because we're going to fold these back to create our legs. And if we don't tie enough in, we won't have any legs at all. If we tie it too long, it'll throw the proportions out. So just to the end of that tail is about right. Now we bring our thread back about a bead's worth. Back from the bead. Trim that excess off and we're going to fill that gap up with some more dubbing. A bit more dubbing wax on there. Same stuff again with the dubbing. Build up this noodle. I'm going to go for a little bit more bulk here than we did in the body. But still keeping it a fine noodle so we've got the control over it. But because this is going to be the thorax of the flight, we want it to have some more bulk and stand out against the thin section of the body. So we'll put some extra dubbing in there, really fill that space behind the bead so we don't get a cavity building up there as we tie it in. As you can see, it's bulging out a little bit, but that will be pressed down when we tie in the wing case and the wing and the legs. So now we take our thumb and forefinger of the right hand and pinch, grab these fibers and pull them forward, transferring to the left hand so that they're sticking out in front of the bead. A little spin of our thread to Help it jump backwards and then we're going to run that thread over the back just to capture those fibers like so. Another one pull down slightly and now with our thumb we're going to push these fibers back and just roll it back and forth so you can see from the top they actually start to part either side then we can pull them down and lay some thread wraps back to hold them in place. Once they're secured down, pop a little half itch in there just to keep it in place. 
you can come in and just trim that up. You can see now that those legs are coming back off of the head. Then all, all that's left to do is a quick rip finish just behind the bead. Break that off. And there we have it. Our claret nymph. Perfect for when mayflies are out and about. It's a Tasmanian staple and one that works very well in the Western Lakes here in Victoria as well as in all the streams around the country. You should have a bunch of these in your box at all times. They do work. They're a great go-to. They will catch fish and they're very easy to tie. Of course, all the materials are available from the Trout Law Fly Tying Store. I'll put links down below, somewhere down there. Uh, and you can follow those to see what the materials are. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel, that way you, know, you can always be up to date when new videos come out. Hit the notification bell if you want to get emails when I do do a new video, otherwise keep checking in from time to time. Thanks a lot, we'll see you next time.